Yes, hello? I'll tell you what, um, I'm not sure who's all out here, um, but I am going to go ahead and uh, pray, and then hopefully everybody will be able to join me um, live. And uh, once again, thanks for being here. But let me pray with you guys, and if you're here and you get this, uh, that's, that's great. If not, I'll repost this a little bit later on and let everybody know that it's out there. Um, and forgive the few minutes of, uh, of time here, but let's pray together. Father, I want to thank you for tonight, and I just pray that you would help us to understand um, a little more about what you want for our lives. And God, I just pray that you would help us to understand this uh, thing that we're going to talk about tonight that's really important, um, and uh, just help us to get it. And it's in Christ we pray. Amen. So um, once again, thanks for being here uh, tonight. And again, I tried the, the live stream tonight. I thought it would work pretty well. Uh, but apparently I still got some technical difficulties to work out. And uh, that just makes me more excited to be able to get together as soon as we possibly can um, as a youth ministry. But I'm not sure if you, uh, obviously we can't do worship here tonight because I don't have a worship band uh, with me uh, unless you want to see my family play kazoos and um, uh, something like that, which I think would be weird. But uh, I want to go ahead and give you the message for tonight that I've been thinking about. And the way I'm going to do this is I brought um, something here. I don't know if you've seen this before or you know what this is, uh, but this is uh, calamine lotion. And as we get started tonight, I want to talk to you about calamine lotion and a little story about myself when I was a kid. You know, I had this, as I was a kid, I had this terrible thing, and maybe you've had it, maybe you haven't, but it's called chicken pox. And um, probably most of you haven't had it because you've had the vaccine. But if you don't know what chicken pox is, let me kind of explain what that is. And I'm going to read it to you just so you understand it, uh, because I looked it up and I wanted to make sure uh, that I was able to give it to you exactly the way uh, that it's described. But it says chicken pox <clears throat> is a highly contagious disease caused by the, and I'm probably going to really mess this up, by the varicella zoster virus or V. ZV. And it says the virus spreads easily from people with chicken pox to others who have never had the disease or never have been vaccinated. The virus spreads mainly through close contact with someone who has chicken pox, kind of like the coronavirus, right? But when you get this virus, what happens is you break out. And I had this virus when I was a kid. You break out in like these scabby hives that have blisters on them, and you it's kind of like poison ivy, but but it really burns, and you itch really bad, and you have this fever. It's pretty terrible. And what you do is, in order to be able to actually soothe the itch and soothe the pain, you take this calamine lotion, and you put it on these chicken pox, these whelps that are on your skin. And so my mom, when I had the chicken pox, what she would do is she would put them all over my skin, and I would feel better, but only for a little while, and you'd have to put more on. It's kind of like when you get, um, you know, like uh, chick or uh, when you get like um, poison ivy or something like that. And it really doesn't fix the problem. And here's why: because chicken pox isn't really on your skin. The actual virus is inside of you. The real problem is the virus that's inside of who you are. The sore that's on your skin that you have to put calamine lotion on, that's just a symptom. Now, why am I telling you all this tonight? Well, as I go back to our teaching series that we've been in here at Engage called Be Positive, I have to be honest and really say that um, as we look around at our life right now, as we look around in the nation, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of things to be positive about, not only because of the COVID-19, but because even more so the rage and the anger that's going on in our nation because of a, uh, the, the death of a black man named George Floyd caused by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Now, if you've watched that um, story, you know that it was a, a pretty traumatic thing. And if you've been watching the news, because of this violent act, there is a lot of rage and there's a lot of anger and there's a lot of protests all over the United States, and rightly so. You see, when you look at these images on the TV, you can say, you know, there's a lot of things that are going wrong in our nation. But one of the things that is really wrong in our nation right now, I'm going to tell you, and obviously it's been wrong for a lot of years, and that is racism. You know, racism is a situation in our, uh, in our nation um, that actually needs to be fixed. Mike, I'd like you to go that way if you would, please. And it needs to be taken care of. 
Um, and we're going to talk about that tonight. You see, if I just come here tonight and I give you a message uh, about being positive and I read you a Bible story or I talk to you about um, something in the Bible that's that's really just doesn't have anything to do with racism, I think that's really wrong for me to do. I think we've got to talk about the problem. You see, one of the greatest ways to be positive is to be able to overcome evil. And the way we overcome evil is by fighting it with good. You see, unless we get to the virus, we're never going to solve the symptom. Yes, there's a lot of protests. There's a lot of situations going on, but that's just the symptom of the real problem. The real problem is the virus of racism. And so tonight what we're going to do is we're going to look at the virus of racism in our nation, and we're going to talk about how we can actually, as Christians, have, as young Christians, how we can actually fight against that. And we're going to do that from a biblical perspective tonight, how to combat this virus of racism. And the way we're going to do that is by specifically um, doing it the way we've been fighting the coronavirus. You know, in the coronavirus, we're doing certain things like uh, having social distances and we're washing our hands and we're doing those kind of things in order to prevent the spread of the virus. Well, tonight I want to talk to you kind of in the same way of how to prevent uh, and stop the spread of racism. And it starts with us. And the first thing I think we can do from a biblical perspective is that we can begin as young Christians, we can practice social distancing from those that hate. Practice social distancing from those that hate. In other words, we got to get away from the haters. Look, here's the deal. For those of us who have given our lives to Jesus Christ, there is no place at all for hate in our lives. As a matter of fact, hate stands completely against God and all that Jesus stands for. There's a passage of scripture that says this in 1 John 4, 20. It says, if anyone boasts, I love God, and goes right on hating his brother or sister, thinking nothing of it, he is a liar. It says, if he won't love the person he can see, how can he love the God he can't see? The command we have from Christ is blunt. Listen to this. Loving God includes loving people. You've got to love both. See, students, let me be real honest with you. As Christian people, as Christian students, we cannot be Christian and be racist people. You cannot be a follower of Jesus and throw people away simply because of the color of their skin. The Bible tells us that if we love God, if we claim to be a follower of Jesus Christ, yet we turn around and we push people away just because of who they are or the color of their skin, we're nothing but posers. As a matter of fact, Jesus calls us what's called whitewashed tombs. You know, one time Jesus was talking to the religious leaders. You know, these leaders were, they, they, they walked around, they act like they were better than everybody else. They act like they were uh, really holy, but inside they were full of prejudice and hate. Listen to what Jesus said. In Matthew 23, 27 through 28, Jesus talked to these religious leaders. He said, woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside. But on the inside, you're full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear as people who are righteous and holy. But on the inside, you're full of hypocrisy and wickedness. You know, Jesus was saying, listen, it doesn't matter if you call yourself a Christian. It doesn't matter if you say you love God. It doesn't matter if you're saying all these holy and wonderful things. If your heart is filled with racism and hatred, you're not a lover of God. And as Christians, if we stand, with those who hate and who are filled with racism, if we stand alongside of, of people who make fun of others or hate others or against others because of the color of their skin, we are in real danger of getting the virus of hate ourselves. You know, remember my story just a moment of the chicken pox and the uh, calamine lotion. You get chicken pox because you're near people who have it. You get the coronavirus because you're near people who have it. And you get hate in your life if you are surrounding yourself with people who are haters. You see, for, if you don't believe me, think about it. For many of us, if we have really close friends, what happens? Don't some, doesn't sometimes we actually begin to talk like them or we begin to act like them or sometimes we'll dress like them? And the reason is, is because social closeness breeds social togetherness. It brings about unity. We don't want to be unified at all, though, with those that stand and advocate for racism. We cannot be people who claim to love God and yet connect ourselves with others who hate uh, people who God has made. Listen to what it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 33. It says, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good 
character. Young brothers and sisters, let me just say this. God loves all people regardless of their color of their skin. I want to show you something. Let me ask you a question. Tell me the difference right now between these two apple pieces. You actually can't. I mean, if you take a look at these, you really can't tell unless I flip them around, right? Then you can begin to tell what they are. One is a red apple. The other one is a green apple. But on the inside, they're both still apple, and they're both good, and they're both nutritious, and they're both healthy, and God made them. You know, and that's the thing. When God created people, he created them in all colors, and he created them good, and he created them with worth and with value. If we stand with other people who just throw other people away simply because of the color of their skin, we're missing out. And we're not doing what Jesus wants us to do. All we're doing is spreading the virus. You see, all people are worthy of being loved and all people are worthy of being saved. And how can we as Christian people stand with those that hate others? We can't. As a matter of fact, the virus spreads through close contact with those who have it, from those who have it. So if you have those in your life that really advocate hate and prejudice against those of a different color, listen to what Scripture tells you. In 2 Corinthians 6, 17 through 18, it says, Come out from them and be separate. Touch no unclean thing and I will receive you and I will be a father to you and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Remember, close contact can cause the spread of the virus. When it comes to those that advocate racism, we've got to practice social distancing. We got to get away from those who are haters. Another thing we've got to begin to do, and you probably have seen this, I'm going to put this on if I don't mess up my glasses, is this. All right, very good. Let me put my glasses back on. Now, many of you probably have one of these. My wife got me this and my kids, um, they're gator masks. And what we do is when we go into a grocery store or we go somewhere, we have to put these masks on. You see, most of you know by, the, by now the coronavirus actually spreads through what comes out of our mouth and our nose, you know, the droplets that actually get spit out or get sent out when we talk or whatever. And if you go to any place public, you've got to do your part and you've got to wear one of these masks over your mouth to stop the spread of the virus. And what's interesting to me is that a lot of people catch the virus, they don't even know they have it. And so it's really important that they cover up their mouth. And you know when it comes to racism, Let me just tell you this. The way it spreads is kind of the same way. It's through the words that we say. You know, as Christians, we should never, and I mean never, ever, ever speak hateful, racist words about anyone. Listen to what it says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. It says, don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. You know, I have to be honest. Um, I will tell you, and I'm not real proud of uh, this. When I was growing up, I actually grew up in the South. Not that I'm not bro- real proud of growing up in the South, but I want to tell you, in the South, I heard a lot of racist words. Even in my own family growing up, I had people who were related to me that were deeply racist. And I almost heard racist words probably on a daily basis. But what is amazing to me is that I never really understood how infected I was with that. I never considered myself a racist person. I still don't. But I will never forget one time when I was in high school, I was on the football team, and I had some friends that actually were black, um, and they played football with me, and they were my teammates. And for one reason or another, I made a joke, and it was a racist joke. And man, the anger and the hurt uh, and the rage that actually came against me, it was amazing. And what's even amazing about that is I never even understood that I even said it. It just came out of me. It was in me, and I will never forget how disgusted I felt with myself. I I realized at the time I had the virus of racism in my life. I didn't even know I had it, and it was coming out of my mouth, and it was affecting other people. In Luke chapter 6, verse 45, I knew I had it because here's what it says. It says, a good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. Listen to this, guys. It says, "What for what you say flows from what is in your heart. Man, I had to really think about that. From that point on, I understood the words of James that said the tongue is like a fire. It actually corrupts the whole body. It sets one's life on fire, like a forest fire, and itself is set on fire by hell. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Listen to this. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. 
You see, our words matter. They can spread love or they can spread hate. You can help cure a virus or you can help spread the virus. Always, always, always think about what you say. Now, once again, you may not have grown up in the South and you, you may not have heard all these racial slurs and all these kind of things. But as a Christian, we need to be mindful in whatever we say. And so we, must, we, we should never let a racist word ever come out of our mouth. Never use your words to spark hatred ever. What we say matters. If you claim to be a follower of Jesus and yet you're using words of racism or hatred of any kind, all you're doing is proving that you're not a follower of Jesus and that you're proving that you are actually, matter of fact, kind of a poser. And what else you're doing is you're spreading the virus of hate. That's not what Jesus wants us to do. As a matter of fact, listen to this. It says in James chapter 1, verse 26, it says, if you claim to be religious, but you don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. Never speak hatred ever against those of a different race, of those of a different religion, or those that claim a different sexual orientation. That's not at all what Christians are about. We are to spread love and not hate. Yes, we're to tell truth, but we're not to spread hate, to help cure the virus and never to actually spread it. The way we do that is we watch what we say and we cover our mouths. And then the last thing I want to teach you tonight of how to actually combat this virus. And it's kind of being like the way we've done with coronavirus. And that is we've got to learn to be a first responder. In other words, we've got to leave the 99 to go find the one. You know, as I watched the news um, over this past week, I would tell you I've, a lot of, I've seen a lot of protests, probably you guys have too, around America. And I've seen, a, I've seen a lot of signs that say black lives matter. I've also seen some signs that say all lives matter. Now, while I want to say that I agree that all lives matter, it is those people of color that have struggled for years against white oppression. It is those people of color that have been discriminated against because of simply the color of their skin. You know, I remember growing up, my dad telling me that when he was growing up, he had black friends that couldn't even go into a fast food restaurant. They actually had to go to the back where the dumpsters are by the kitchen to buy a hamburger to eat. What a ter terrible thing to have to actually go through. You know, and as a white person, I don't understand that. I've never been through it. And so we have to understand that black people are, are hurting. They're going through a lot and they feel separated. Black people in this nation have been overlooked and turned away because of the color of their skin. While all lives matter, Jesus cares for people who have been mistreated and turned away. He has a heart for the hurting. The Bible says that God is close to the brokenhearted. And black people, people of color, have had their hearts broken by the brutality of racism for a lot of years in our nation. They have been separated all because of, again, their color of their skin. And as Christian people, as white Christian students... We can be a generation, we can be a church that can go and help reconcile those that feel separated. Now, you remember in the story of the Bible, there's a great illustration from Jesus. One time he actually was talking about a shepherd that had a hundred sheep, but for one reason, one of them kind of wandered off and felt, and they were separated. And he left the 99 sheep to go find the one. Let me tell you the story in Luke chapter 15, one through six, it says, now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathered to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, remember I talked about them other, uh, earlier. It says, this, he, they said, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has had a hundred sheep and you lose one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I found my lost sheep. You see, here's the point. The lives of the 99 mattered, but so did the one sheep that was, that was left. And he went after that one, that one sheep that was separated from the others. See, the parable of the lost sheep is a wonderful story told by Jesus to illustrate the love and the compassion that God has for every single person. The religious leaders, also known as the Pharisees, they had hearts that were filled with anger and prejudice and bad motives. They couldn't believe that Jesus would associate with these type of people. But Jesus stopped the crowd and he taught them this lesson of how a shepherd left 99 to go find the one. 
Now, obviously, the parable displays the meaning that God is out to seek the sinner, and, and he rejoices when they're found, but there's something else, too. It tells us that God cares equally for each and every one of us, every one of us, and for us to be rescued and renewed. It also teaches that no matter who people are, what they look like, all of them are important. You see, our nation has been split and separated for years, and even more so now in our nation, because of the virus of racism. And let me just tell you, students, if I just came here tonight and just gave you a message and, and just said, hey, you know, everything is great, it isn't. In our world right now, we have a problem. We have a problem of racism, and we need to help fix it. And the only way to fix it is by getting to that virus. Our nation has been split. But let me just tell you, the protests are not the problem. The anger is not the problem. The looting is not the problem. That's just a symptom of the problem. It's kind of like the chicken pox. The chicken pox on my skin wasn't the problem. It was the virus inside. In order to be able to get to the virus, we've got to, sit, we've got to go to that with the love of Jesus Christ. And as young Christians, we can help bring healing, but we have to do our part. We've got to social distance from those that spread hate. Yes, we can pray for them and we can love them from a distance, but we can't stand with them. We've got to cover our mouths and never use words of hate against anyone. And my prayer is when it comes to racism, we'll be first responders. What I mean by that is we'll go after the ones that actually feel separated simply because of the color of their skin. And so my prayer is that you would help heal um, our nation. That as young students, as young Christians, that you would go forward and never, ever, ever stand with racism. And maybe you don't have a problem with this, and I hope you don't. But we actually can do something about it. Your generation can do something about it. As Christians, we can do something about it. Yes, we can pray, but we have to be active. And the way that we're active is through the actions of our life. I hope that made sense. And um, I know this isn't very long, but I'm going to put up a, a Zoom um, uh, here in just a second. If you would go back to the Life Church site, I'll put a Zoom up there, and we'll connect through Zoom, uh, and we'll talk about this a little bit further. God bless you guys, and hopefully that message made sense. I'll see you on Zoom here in just a minute.